Hello and welcome back to Mackenzie Woodworking. We got a great project today that we're going to show you. It's Essentials of Laying Fiberglass Over Plywood. And this is brought to you, this program is brought to you by Independent Marine Supply Store. Uh, they're a store located in central uh, Vancouver Island. They're a marine supply store with um, fiberglass and epoxy and all the bits and pieces that you need for your boat or motorhome or RV. They've been in business for over 30 years and their staff have got a tremendous amount of knowledge that can help you through any project. So go on up and see them or give them a call and they should be able to help you to uh, complete any project that you're working on in the marine field. And it's a great store. they got all the bells and whistles. So if you're looking for some bling for your boat, go on up and see them and they'll take care of you. So here we are, we're going to start our project. And like I said, this is sort of the essentials of laying a fiberglass mat, which will be an ounce and a half mat over top of uh, plywood. And the plywood that you always want to use is marine plywood. And this is, uh, uh, well, actually not marine plywood, but exterior plywood. And uh, this is fur. Yeah, so this is just a prototype piece that we're doing here. Uh, what we're eventually going to be doing and showing you is we're doing a holiday trailer roof. So this is a, uh, a um, beginning on that project to show you uh, the, the procedures and the material that we'll be using. Uh, there's actually a cutout of the roof on the holiday trailer. Uh, that was the vent portion, but you can see how thick the mat is on top of it. And that's a piece of ounce and a half mat that has had polyester resin on it. So we're going to start off. Uh, we've got our deck surface there and we're going to be, uh, 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 I just showed you, uh, we had some lightweight filler there, Bondo. And there's the fiberglass resin, which is a polyester resin. And there's the catalyst. Uh, over top of that we'll be putting gel coat and you want to make sure that it's unwaxed and uh, what you'll have to get for that is a product called air dry and it's basically a wax that you'll be adding uh, we add anywhere about between 15 and 20 percent depending on the temperature uh, there's the mat will be going down and uh, we also uh, get the four inch uh, uh, pieces as well they come in a roll and they're four inches wide and uh, we've got a, uh, uh, they come in 50 and 100 foot rolls. So uh, you're also gonna need a small measuring cup. Uh, when you're add only adding the uh, catalyst, uh, check what you're manufacturing, but uh, usually it's between 1.5% and 2.5%, and depending on the, on the temperature outside. Resin likes to be around 70 to 72 degrees. So, and a bigger container to mix it all in as well. So, and there's our roller. And because this, uh, we're not going for a smooth, glossy finish, uh, we'll be using a 10 mil micro uh, roller. And we have a, a chip brush there as well. And try and get one that has a natural wood handle. And there are some uh, glue brushes uh, for getting in small areas, tight areas, a couple of those. And um, as well, we'll be um, uh, sanding any of the surface. And we have a 36 inch grit paper that we'll be using on our angle sander. sander. And um, before you put anything on your plywood, you always want to sand the coat of it and give it a wipe. I'll uh, give them a wipe with, uh, with some acetone. Uh, a lot of mills will spray their plywood with a product called Mill Glaze. And that has a wax mixture in it. And a pair of good sharp scissors is easier to cut. Uh, some nitrile gloves. Uh, they're better than latex and they won't melt away on you. And uh, there's all the product there as well. And you can see that uh, this was all supplied to us by uh, an independent marine supply. And uh, they've got their own line of fiberglass resins and gel coats. So. Uh, um, if you're doing anything on your boat and you're doing some repairs, they'll point you in the right direction. Make sure that you check them out. So here we are, we, 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 we just have some plastic out. And what this is, what is our drip edge that will be going on the leading edge uh, or anything that's hanging over. And uh, we've uh, pre-rounded all the corners. Uh, that's one thing you'll notice about Matt. Uh, when you're doing fiberglass, 
Everywhere that you have a corner to go around, it will not take a 90 degree corner. You have to have a rounded edge. And uh, so uh, we, we, we start on the, the um, top surface and then we all uh, uh, return down an inch and a half on both sides. And this will eventually be the bottom. So this will be nailed on the side. And what you're seeing here is the bottom. And the reason we do this is that so whenever it gets attached to the, the building, or the deck or the trailer or boat edge uh, it's it's already been wrapped around the bottom um, so uh, when you're coming down over the edge you only have to come down to a flat surface just just makes it an awful lot easier to uh, work with and apply and here's the technique you notice that i'm going sideways on the chip brush right down the center and on the chip brush you, you don't use them as a paintbrush you're basically dabbing you're dabbing your uh, resin onto it and uh, and here we are just saturating the surface before you do any mat you always want to saturate and seal your surface so uh, here i am just uh, sealing everything and i'll allow this all to dry before we continue on on with uh, anything else and what this will do is when you put down your your mat and your resin it won't have uh, evaporate into the wood surface you don't want the wood pulling out all the resin and and making your mat dry you want the resin to sit on top of it so that's an essential that you really want to follow so here I am, uh, uh, this is parchment paper, and this is, like I said, this will be the bottom edge, but I want it nice and smooth. So what we do is we cut parchment paper, smooth that out with our hands or a uh, trowel, and you want to, and you can see right through it that you're getting it all smooth. And, and, um, and we'll leave this for two or three hours, and then we'll peel that off. And that'll give us a perfectly smooth area. Uh, here I am making up some bono to fill any imperfections. You can see that there's some holes um, on the plywood stuff. You don't want that because when you're pouring your resin over top of your mat, you don't want it to fall down in the holes and uh, leave your mat dry. So you want to fill all those. And what we use is a lightweight, easy sand uh, bondo. And you want to make sure this all goes solid color. You don't want any zebras. Uh, so, and, and just keep on uh, laying it over until it goes to a, uh, 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 this will be a light blue, but there'll be no marks. And there it is there. We've uh, filled the uh, screw holes and, uh, and any of the uh, uh, pivots as well to get all those little craters filled right up to the top. And uh, take your time so that you don't have a lot of sanding. So this is a cant strip uh, that we cut and it's basically a, uh, it's been cut on a 45 degree on the front and that lays right into the corner. And then we'll coat that and just fasten that in with some pin nails. You can see we fasten it in with some pin nails. And what this allows you to do is when the mat goes up a wall, if, if you have a return that's going up a wall, uh, it'll run along this and go up the wall uh, there again uh, so that the mat does not have to make a 90 degree turn. Here I am pulling off the parchment paper off the, uh, off the drip edge and you can see how perfectly smooth that is. Uh, there's no fiber coming through or anything and this will end up being the bottom of it and you can see it's only down an inch and a half from the top and so once I once I uh, apply this to the side wall um, and then when our mat comes over the top and the top of it is radius as well the mat can come over the top and just lay in the, uh, the flat piece uh, without having to make another 90 degree turn. So here I am just taking a uh, hand sander and, uh, and uh, making sure that there's no bumps or anything from the uh, Bondo. And I've just uh, pre-cut the map and just sizing it. And you can't see the front there, but it, uh, it, it hangs over an inch and a half on the front and it goes uh, up the back and uh, up past the cat strip an inch and a half. So what I always do is just make a couple of reference marks here and just uh, use a Sharpie and that will let you know whenever you fold it or move it that, uh, that that's where you want to go. And uh, a good way to do your mat is uh, fold it over and only do half the surface at one time but you'll leave the mat down. And you have to do a pre-saturation, it's called. So uh, we, I've got the resin all mixed up 
and I, I've mixed it up at 1.5% uh, uh, catalyst to resin because uh, it's actually uh, gotten warmer out and, and so just take the roller and you saturate the bottom first and then we'll roll the ounce and a half mat over top of that and it gets pushed right into the corners and everything and then we roll it back and there I am just uh, saturating the uh, surface again. And I don't have to worry about this evaporating too much too quickly. If this wasn't pre-sealed, um, I would be worried about this um, resin being soaked right into the uh, wood surface. But because it was pre-sealed, it's going to lay on top. And then we just lay the mat back over it. And you can see that the mat hasn't moved. We're still on our reference marks. Um, so we're... Uh, and just going to uh, put some resin on top of it. I'll roll some resin on top of it and we'll saturate this resin. And you want to saturate the resin until you get it, get it translucent and we should be able to see the plywood again. And, um, and if you see any white marks or anything and uh, you don't want that, you want to keep saturating and moving your roller around or your chip brush in the area that you're working until you get it translucent. It has to be completely clear. If there's some areas that you just can't get the white out of, uh, what, what, what the problems may be if you're troubleshooting it, you may have some moisture on it. Uh, that's one thing uh, uh, resin does not like is moisture. Uh, or you, you might have had a bit of catalyst in it, uh, 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 or, um, or uh, resin, and it's uh, stopping it from being saturated. But uh, once this is all saturated, you should be able to see right through it. As you can see, this is a, uh, I'm just trying to get some product on, and then we'll go back to the roller and start rolling it out. So what we do is just lay some over top, uh, and give it a chance to saturate in, and, um, and then we use our roller and we'll just keep rolling back and forth. And like I was saying, this is a 10 mil roller because uh, uh, this will, uh, would be demonstrating the, uh, the, the top roof of, uh, of the trailer uh, that we're doing or, uh, or deck surface. And you're, you don't want it glass smooth because you'd be walking on it. So it's okay to use a 10 mil roller. If you want something really smooth, then you'd go to a, a, a five, five weight roller and that will give you a smoother surface. So here we are just, um, uh, I just want to um, get another container of resin. And we'll just roll that on and once it gets saturated, uh, you roll it on and get some product on top and, and just wait a couple of minutes and for it to uh, sort of saturate in and then we'll roll it back and forth. And you just want to keep working the product until you get all the white out of it. And push it tight into the corners and over the top. What I'm doing, you can see that I'm pushing into the corner and you want to make sure that it's tight into the corners and then up the wall as well and that there's no air voids or anything in it and this is where i'll use my chip brush and like i said um, you, with the chip brush or fiber brush uh, you're just pushing it into the surface so here we've done the edge on the front and you can see i've done the same thing uh, um, i have the parchment paper cut and we've laid it over the top so this is all dry now and I'll peel that right back and that's because I want this face edge and the top edge to be nice and smooth. Uh, what I'm showing is this is what we'll be doing the roof on the holiday trailer. So I want a nice edge that you'll be seeing. So uh, there's no fiber coming through that edge. It's smooth and it's uh, it'll just need a light sand and then gel coat it. And you can see that there's no white and, and um, it's all translucent. You can see right, th right through to the plywood um, and all the holes were filled. And uh, there's the gel coat that will be go going on top of that. But we'll, we'll give that a light sand first. And, um, and then um, we'll, we'll put on a, um, a small box on top too. I'm going to show you um how to uh 
fiberglass that into the surface. So if you're doing a roof deck on a whole day trailer or a camper or a motorhome, um, what you do is you, you fiberglass your entire deck first and I've just given it a, a run over top of here with a, a 36 grit paper. And what this will do is just uh, make it flat again and just give it another bonding surface. So uh, once that's done, I'll just build a uh, small box and it'll be an inch and a half high. And, um, and, and I've radius the top of the surface and we'll mount that down, down to the deck. And what uh, I mount it down with is just uh, uh, polyurethane caulking. And I'll just fasten it down. So there it is there. And now we have to mix up some Bono again. What I like to use too, is when you're mixing resins or bonos or any kind of filler that you don't want to lose the, uh, the resin out of, uh, we use plastic laminates. So these are just leftover uh, pieces of uh, countertop material and then we'll mix on top of it. And your, your, um, your putty knives that you're using, you pick them out, uh, up at paint places or or at uh, the marine supply store and, and you want a radius edge on it uh, they'll have a rounded edge and that's so that we can go all the way around the uh, built up here and uh, uh, that'll give you a, a nice round radius that the, the mat can follow up on. So I'm just putting about a fist size uh, piece on the uh, pallet there and we'll put about an inch of uh, of the uh, uh, cream hardener on top of that and we're going to mix that in really good and uh, and you really want to take your, your time and make sure that uh, this is all, all mixed in and what we do is called a procedure uh, uh, it's called paddling where you just keep on um, uh, flattening out and bringing it over top of it uh, over top of it and what they'll do is they'll stop you from getting air mixed into it and air bubbles and voids uh, and you just keep on uh, pushing it flat into it so I'll be showing you here and once we get this mixed up we'll just uh, sort of dab this on the uh, sides just showing you that we put about the size of a fist and a, an inch line there of the hardener and there it is there if you notice I'm just I keep pulling it back and forth on top of itself and you don't want any zebras you, you want this all one solid color and once we get that all done and, and this will dry in about 20 minutes and uh, then we can give it a quick sand and uh, and then start with our uh, saturation and our mat as well. So, and it's always better to mix up a little bit more than you think you're going to need because you don't want in the middle of this to uh, have to remix more um, uh, filler. And this is a, the exact same filler that I use for all the voids and everything. So there we go. It's turning a nice solid color. No voids on it. And like I was saying, we just paddle it uh, over top of it. And you'll notice as you're doing this, because it's getting warmer because of the uh, uh, what the what the catalyst does actually adds adds heat to it uh, to any polyester so I've uh, just laid that in and uh, rounded up the edges uh, with the uh, the trowel there you can see I'm using the uh, the back side of it the radius edge and I'll just do the uh, the final on the back side and I just scoop that off and just push that in and then you can just pull it back and around the corner and that will give you that that nice radius edge. Just fill all your voids. And be, pre be prepared. This stuff is sticky. And unless you're an auto body guy that uses it every day, you're probably going to pull your hair out. But just take your time and and get it on. And uh, and you can always sand it if you put too much on. But 
but it's important when you pick up your putty knives that you pick up uh, the ones that have a radius edge or or you can make one if you have a bit of plastic around but it's uh, but it's just as easy to have one with a radius edge and remember just uh, tapping up corners there you just top that up so it's nice and smooth and I'll just run that all the way along You can, see, you can see the top of this uh, curb that we built and so this would be if you're putting a skylight or a fan or uh, anything on a roof that you want built up and you can see the top is uh, rounded over on the edge there so uh, the fiberglass will come right up to the top of it over that edge and then down through the radius then onto the flat deck so uh, yeah, there's no 90s at all everything has to have us a soft edge to it and you can see the radius there laying in along the curb and that gives you a nice transition from the flat surface up to any vertical piece and once that dries and this is about 20 minutes later and I'll just give this a sand now you can see I have a piece of foam there and I've just wrapped that with 60 degree paper and uh, just rounded off some foam and that will just uh, I'll just run that back and forth on the radius and we'll go all the way around uh, and uh, what that will do is just give, give me a nice uniform edge and if you have any bumps or dips, they'll take that off at the same time. And I usually make three or four of these sanders up uh, ahead of time of any project that we start. And, we, and uh, we have one flat edge and a 90 degree edge and then the round edge on our uh, sanding sticks. And then I'm, I'm just going along making sure if there's any uh, leftover resin left anywhere uh, that we t just take that off. Uh, and uh, just uh, double checking that it's nice and smooth. You can see that uh, the lightweight really sands nice and smooth. And this is 60 grit paper that we're using again. So, and I'm showing you this is a bit of a trick that we uh, like to use, or or principle, not really a trick, but you uh, you tear your your sheet in half, and this will give you a feather edge that's going down onto the flat deck surface. So whenever the resin uh, dries, you're not gonna have, you're not gonna notice a hard edge. This will flare out onto the deck. So I've, I just cut about a, a two foot piece, uh, eight inches wide, and then just rip that right down the center. And then we'll just tear off the, uh, the size of the pieces uh, that we need uh, to wrap this curb. And uh, there's a smaller piece. And you notice uh, it's uh, a flared on the end and uh, on the sides. So the um, the uh, the hard edge, which we call the cut edge, uh, will be starting on the top of the curb. So here again, just saturating everything first. Uh, Pre-saturation, it's important uh, to have that. And then that already, as soon as you start laying your mat on it, you actually know that the uh, resin will s start to penetrate the mat so I'm just do the entire surface and like I said this is just a, a prototype or a sample so that I can walk through all the processes with you and show you what's being done um, because our, our bigger project uh, that we have coming up is fiberglassing a holiday trailer roof and uh, that'll be a roof that'll be good for 25 years so we've uh, taken off that uh, that material that they use on the fiberglass roofs and, uh, and actually put on proper plywood. They use door skins on the one that we're redoing and they've all delaminated. So uh, you, you'll have to look for further videos coming up. Uh, and here we are uh, using the chip brush again and you just push that into the corner and uh, remember these brushes aren't used as a paint brush to, to drag the paint you're you're just um, uh, dabbing it and when you get to your corners uh, what i like to do is just tear them 
uh, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can use scissors, but if you tear it, uh, you'll be able to uh, just wrap it around the corner and then blend it in. Uh, what we'll be using is a, a thing called a bubble roller or a laminate roller. It's just a s steel roller, uh, which will laminate the sheets together and make sure that there's no air pockets in it. And I like using uh, a small one. Uh, it's about a three quarter inch roller. so. They come in all different sizes, but we'll just keep going all the way around with this. And you can see uh, how I just tear off the bits and pieces in the corner. And the little pieces that I tear off, I use them for reinforcing uh, on the corner. So once we get the wraps done, I'll take those small pieces and just push them into the corners and laminate them on. So there'll be uh, two or three layers on the corner. And then yeah, I just uh, dab that on. And you'll notice with the chip brush, uh, once you push it in, I'll, I'll just run all the way down the top edge and I, and I split uh, each side right down the center of the brush. And this is a two and a half inch chip brush. This is the size that I usually use on all our applications is uh, two and a half inches. And make sure that you always get one that just has a solid wood handle so you don't have a problem with the plastic melting in your hand. You can see I'm just dabbing it in again. You want to use this as a dabber everywhere that you go so you're, you're not dragging the, uh, the mat out of the, uh, the fiber out of the mat. And we'll just push this all into the corners. And then I have just gone on to retrieve the uh, the uh, the glass roller and the laminate roller. Some some people call it a bubble roller to get the bubbles out, but it's for laminating fiberglass mat. And uh, there it is there. And I'll you just push that right into the corner, and then up the top, and then over the top. You see how that lays everything nice and flat and then I'll go around to the other side and then back and forth and you just keep on bringing your mat together and making sure that there's no air left on there you don't want any voids you don't want any of that white and if it uh, you may want to get in there and tear it apart a bit uh, to make sure that everything is laminating over the top This is where you're going to want to really watch the principles of adding the uh, the catalyst to your uh, resin. You don't want it kicking off too fast because this is a uh, doing uh, returns and stuff like this takes some time to get them in right. You just keep laminating over top and moving it back and forth. If you see there's an area that uh, has back folded on it or anything, you can just reach in there and tear, tear that out. So. And I'll just keep working this and there it is there it's still wet and I'm just on the other the far side now but you can see how it's all folded in over top of itself and you can see where it comes down onto the deck because it's been a tore edge it just sort of blends right onto the deck uh, you don't have a hard edge there that you have to sand off if this was a roof surface it wouldn't really matter anyways it's still going to bond so I'm just going to follow the same procedures on this side. We'll just get that all saturated in and fold it over top and uh, get that laminated on. And uh, so, like I was saying, uh, this would be for anything that you want to build up off your roof. And uh, so this would be for uh, a vent or a skylight or, uh, or, or even if you wanted to have something to protrude through the top of your roof like an antenna or anything you'd be able to make a box for it and then come up through it so we're just dabbing that all on we'll get this all sealed in and, and wrapped up it's the same procedure and there it is there and so um, it's all glassed on and I've just given it a rough sand there and uh, so uh, and give it a wipe off and uh, before you 
do your uh, your final coat. It's good to give everything a, a wipe with some acetone and a rag. And I'm just showing you the um, the uh, I've uh, thinned down the uh, gel coat. This is gel coat, and what I use is styrene, and I use about 20% styrene, and then 10% uh, air dry, which is a wax, and then your 1.5% uh, uh, catalyst, and you mix that in a big container. And uh, there again, you want to mix enough that. Uh, that you know you have enough to, to cover your job. And they're just checking the density of it again. And we're just using a 10 mirror mil uh, micro roller again. And because this is a deck surface or a roof surface on top of a, uh, a uh, holiday trailer, uh, you, you don't want it glass smooth. You actually want a bit of a surface. So what the 10 mil roller will do is give you some te texture to the top of it. And with it being thinned out, it'll, um, it'll go down into all the voids and um, uh, um, if there's any small pinholes or anything, it'll flow right in there and seal everything off. But, but at this point, there's about four coats of uh, of polyester resin on top of everything so uh, uh, this is really sealed good for a long time if you notice the front there how it wraps around and uh, so it's a, a, a nice wrap on the edge and then after you get all your product on I back roll or front roll depending on on the um, on the roller sleeve that you have on which way it goes but I'm just showing you the texture there now the top surface and uh, that's ready to go and we just have to wait till that cures off and um, and if you pop the vent on that hole that would be the top surface thank you for watching and i hope you enjoy these videos and if you do please uh, subscribe and share and if you have any comments about this um, i'd love to hear them and stay tuned for the following projects coming up thank you